I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, right? Okay. But okay. she has lied to you. I, I just can't sleep. And it looks lovely. It does, yeah. Salt's Third Wheel Dates might be the most hands-on dating show you've ever seen because not only do we do the matching, we rock up on the date too. And I, Lauren Windle, will be playing Gooseberry and helping people find love. If everyone gets on well, they can go off on an IRL date in real life. But if not, they can select URL and we'll put a link at the bottom of the show so that viewers can apply to date them. Yeah, I'm feeling good like about today. A um, bit nervous, a bit excited, but you know, you don't try, you don't get. I feel quite excited about today's date. Um, a little bit nervous, but I'm sure we'll be fine once we get into it. Matthew is 26 years old and from Lincoln. And while, yes, technically he's between jobs, you're about to find out that he is an incredibly talented guy. So my feeling is that no job deserves him. 35-year-old Danny is from Buckinghamshire. And she's a student studying accounting, which to my mind makes her basically Rachel Riley. Yeah, so in my free time, I love to play video games. I love to read and I love to go for walks with friends. Baking, um, I really love reading in bed, and I really love napping. Oh, what makes me the perfect partner? Well, I feel like I'm very considerate of others, like I'm very caring towards other people. You'll never be bored in my company, and also I'll cook for you and I'll make you laugh. The most important character trait that I look for is kindness. Just that they're a really open, honest person and that they can communicate with me how they feel. I think just ignorance is like a huge red flag for me. I think for me a massive red flag is if someone plays it cool with me. Like, I don't like that at all. I just want a lot of attention and just someone who's very into me and shows me that. Yeah, so my celebrity crush is Hayley Steinfeld. Um, I would go to Italy and I would try local cuisine and I would see the sights with her. My celebrity crush is Jamie Dornan. He's got a lovely Irish accent, so I think my ideal date would be if we went somewhere quiet where I could listen to his voice, his lovely little accent, and maybe just somewhere like in the sun, we can enjoy the weather and I can enjoy his voice. Great. I'm really excited about this one, guys. I think that we've got a really good balance in both of them of like fun and humor. And I think that they'll be kind of sassy as well. But I also think we've got that gentleness, that heart. I think that they, they want similar things. And even if it's not romance, like I know this is gonna be fun. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> yes. You've got quite a lot in common. Did you know that? Really? Hi. Well, no, you wouldn't know that because <laughs> you only just met. But I know that you guys have quite a lot in common. OK. Because you both like to write. Right? Oh, cool. Nice. What kind of things do you like to write? Yeah, um, hear this, hear this. OK, so I've written a few novels, not published, but um, it's like the novel that I wrote last year because I'd just done a master's in creative writing. At Lincoln Uni. Yeah. Um, it's kind of Handmaid's Tale meets The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> I can't makes imagine any sense. Like. <laughs> Danny oh loves God. reading in bed. Does that feel like the sort of thing that you would read in bed? Um, Just picture the rain pattering on the windows. <laughs> You're there. You've got three cushions around you and you've got a book in your hand. Matrix meets Handmaid's okay. Tale. Is there any romance in it? Uh, no. What? No, I'm sorry. I feel like unless there's any... There's unless, got okay. to be somewhat yeah. something. Yeah, not there in, has to be romance. If a, if a film doesn't have romance in, yeah. I feel like I lose interest in the film. Fair enough. Yeah, what, what a waste of everyone's time. <laughs> um, what do you like to write? Um, what do I like to write? Um, so I worked um, for a theatre company last okay. year. I wrote like little bits and pieces okay. um, for them. I wrote a couple of scenes in okay. one of their productions, which I went to see a couple of months okay. ago, and they basically massacred the scene, so like Ooh. literally nothing. Oh, <laughs> do I you remember yeah. your yeah. original script? Because we could probably do it right. We love drama, you love uh, drama. I, I, I could be quite dramatic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So basically, Judas is calling the high priest to betray Jesus. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Hello, who is this? It's Judas. Oh, hi Judas, how are things? Yes, so 
good. Oh, Do you great. know what? Amazing. The weather's been lovely. Oh, and great. we're just Amazing. coming up to this like big festival time. So okay. I think I'm going to take the kids out of town. Just before I head off out of town. Yep. So one sort of order of business I think is quite important. Jesus is a slippery little fish. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not good. And, no. And it's, he's a threat. Okay. And the more I think about it, the more I think we have to eliminate him. Oh, okay. It's a tall order, but I feel like, yeah, someone should do, should do it. Let me make you an offer you might refuse. Um, oh, how about... That's not how you start a negotiation. Um, half price tickets to one of these festivals. Which festival? <sighs> I'm not going to lie, I don't usually get out of bed for more than three bags of silver. How about two? Two. I can meet you in the middle at two and the Glastonbury tickets. Yeah, well... All right, deal, deal done. Deal done, deal absolutely. Done. Thanks, Judith. And scene. This show is sponsored by Christians Who Curse Sometimes, where we love Jesus, but also mess up and curse a little. Christians Who Curse Sometimes provides daily discussion topics, articles and resources to grow your faith and grow community by taking the online offline. Did you guys bring a little snack to share with each other? I bought a drink. A drink? Yes. I bought a snack. Oh, amazing. That works out well. What's the drink? It's so Pepsi. I don't really drink alcohol, so... Bring it all up. Okay. Uh, why Pepsi, not Coke? Because uh, it's superior drink. I um, actually used to be a very, very big Britney fan, and Britney was obviously okay. the face of Pepsi. Fair enough. She was. What's yeah. the best Britney song? Drive me crazy. I think... I just can't sleep. I think so. <laughs> that was That's actually good. good. It was oh, good. Thanks. That was good. <laughs> thanks. No one ever sings when I ask them to sing, so this has been a... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was good, right? Was good. What did you want to sing? Uh, I'm usually quite clumsy, so I try not to drop this. Completely unnecessary what bird's eye view there, just ramping up the pressure. You, which does yeah, make great. the surface oh, that's enough, thank you. more tense. Oh, that's enough. Yeah. Yep. yeah, great. Yeah. Now just a little bit more. Great, there we go. I just Yeah, I'd love some as it goes. Oh, Thanks sorry. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now that we've all finally got our drinks, yeah. cheers. cheers! Absolutely. Cheers, cheers to a lovely first day. <laughs> uh, what, what have you brought, mm. Danny? So I must have known that you would bring Pepsi, which is okay. a very sugary drink, okay. because I've made sugar-free sweet potato Ooh. brownies. Oh, nice! Sweet potato. <laughs> wow! <laughs> We're probably on me. <laughs> I was like, do I, do I, do I like lick it off because it might be rude? But no. I, I've got brownie on my finger. I've got brownie on my finger. It's really nice, though. Thank you. Oh, you like it, do you? I do. Oh, I'm a very nice. picky eater as well. So, <laughs> do you like cooking or baking? I try to, but I'm not a very good cook. So I just get ready and I'll stick it in the microwave or the oven, mm. and then it's done. What's your favourite ready meal? <laughs> my favourite ready meal. It's like an amazing cheese and tomato pasta that Tesco do. Mm. Fair. You could just make that from scratch, you know. I could, but I mean. You guys haven't asked because it's like I'm not even here, but I'm a writer too. Oh. So this is like actually just almost like a writer's retreat or like a writer's holiday. You know, you write plays, you write fiction, I write non fiction. Thanks for your interest. <laughs> Only a published author, guys. <laughs> but I thought, like, Whilst we've got such talented creatives, and I haven't read your work, but okay. I know that I'm talented, so at least I'll bring up the average if, <laughs> if there's more yeah. working to be done here. Let's, like, write a story together. Amazing. So, so tell them to write someone's name at the top of the paper. So someone famous or whatever, and that's gonna be like the protagonist of your story. And then you just do a little fold and you pass to the left. <laughs> oh, I love this game. Okay. Write on the received paper what the person did. Six hours later. Tell us right. your magical story. So it's Brittany. The, she went to a pottery cafe to. I'm so sorry. To paint a mug. Paint, okay, cool. Uh, a mug with the Starbucks Starbucks logo because they couldn't afford to buy the merch from the store. In the year 3000, not much has changed, but they lived under water. That was me. I find myself so funny. Harry Hill went on a blind date and sang, <laughs> and sang a song while the date looked on awkwardly. <laughs> this was on the beach in Costa Rica on the 3rd of June, 1847. <laughs> this happens 
because they had a little voice deep inside that told them they had to do it. <laughs> How creepy is that? <laughs> I think we've all proven ourselves there. Absolutely. Proven our talent. <laughs> Hopefully they get made into like Hollywood blockbusters. Who would play you? Harry Hill? Maybe, maybe Britney Spears? Oh yeah, yeah, she'd be a wonderful yeah. Matthew. If I've ever thought anything when I see Britney, Amazing. I'm like, that's what Amazing. she was. Who would play you? Maybe Kirsten Dunst. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, thanks for asking. <laughs> Honestly, it's like, what am I even doing here, you know? Um, but there are some questions that you guys wanted to ask each other. Yep. So, if you had 60 seconds on TV oh. to talk about whatever you want, okay. what would you talk about? Cool, so uh, I'm on the autistic spectrum and I would just talk about how it affects me and how people don't have to be limited by their diagnosis, so. Love yeah. that. Hmm. Interesting. Do you feel like it kind of benefits you in, in ways that, in certain ways? I think in some ways, yeah. Yeah, my imagination is constantly active, so obviously it helps with the writing, because I definitely feel like that's my calling. Okay. And that's where God is leading me down the path of like writing. So I feel like it does, and I also can relate to people in different ways. Okay. Um, then I might not, if I didn't have autism. We should get you 60 seconds on TV <laughs> to do that. So a question Matthew is really keen to hear about you is, what was your most recent big buy, big purchase? I do spend quite a lot of money on getting my hair done. <laughs> Which is... And it looks lovely. It does, yeah. It does. Which... <laughs> Because I'm a, stu well, I'm a student, so that feels like a massive extravagance for me. Like, to not get like a rough drive to get a blow dry, that's like an sure. extravagance, okay. I feel like. Apart from that, I think that's it. I think that's like okay. my, that's like my extravagant nice. thing nice. at the moment. Okay, so Matthew, tell us, yeah. what is God getting you excited about at the moment? That was something Danny Amazing. was keen to hear from you. Kind of coming out of the lockdowns, just like reconnecting with people and people kind of connecting in different ways. And like, I'm an introvert. And, but I, I love spending time with people and I've seen people kind of in that similar position where they're like, okay, I want to spend time on my own, but I want to connect with people at the same time and like kind of navigating how to do that. Okay. For the first time since lockdown, I think it's something that's just really exciting me. That's cool. Did you find it hard in lockdown not seeing people? I mean, I get, in a way, I think at the start it was like quite easy because I'm used to like just in my, being in my own space. But like, I think as time went on, like, I think it's this, the subsequent lockdowns, that was what okay. kind of I found harder. So a good question Matthew had for you was, uh, <laughs> what lesson do you feel like you've learned the hard way? My parents do actually give good advice. Mm. Yeah. And if they're, if they're like, sometimes they'll say different things, sure. but when they like both say the same thing, I'm like, yeah. right, okay, this is sure, important. Yeah. I, should, I yeah. should listen to this. Yeah. So yeah, there you are. Nice, okay. Um, what's kind of the, been the most difficult thing that the kind of they've given for advice? They've always told me that I need to have a skill for work. Okay. Whereas I've always just been a bit more like kind of, yeah, sure. I'm working yeah. Going like on. plumbing or something. Like something like that. Or accountancy, which I'm studying. <laughs> sure, accountancy, yeah, yeah, yeah. More in line with what you're currently doing. Just don't have enough female plumbers, so I thought I'd <laughs> encourage it if that was what they were saying, you know? All right, let's chat to them one on one to see how they think it's going. Mate, you haven't drunk your Pepsi. Do you? You hate Pepsi. I, I, drink, I don't drink sugary drinks. Oh. Did you have a fake sip where your mouth was closed and you just... <laughs> No judgment. Are you having a good time? Yes, I am. Yes. What What do you think of Matthew? He seems like a sweet guy. I don't fancy him. Not gonna lie, that's not the answer I was looking for. That's honest and very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Matthew. Yes. Tonight, Matthew, yeah. <laughs> you are being a person on a date. How yeah. are you finding it? Yeah, really good. Yeah. yeah. I, she's really easy to get on with. She yeah. is. Really she... warm and friendly. Yeah, really warm so. and friendly. Apart from, look, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, right? Okay. But okay. she has lied to you. Oh. She doesn't like Pepsi. Oh, no. I checked. Okay. I was like, mate, you haven't drunk your Pepsi? She was like, I just don't like it. <sighs> okay, that's fine. What's I was that? like, what drink do, do I get? What's do that I... about? That's fine. What's that about? That's fine? That's fine, that's fine for you. Yeah, that level of deception me. is fine for don't, you. I don't mind. Do you feel like there's like a romantic connection or is it feeling like just super friendly at the moment? I feel like there could be something. Mm. Obviously, I you know, need to spend more time to really know, but mm. there might be. I'm not okay. sure. I feel like I felt very at ease cool. with Great. you. Amazing. Um, and 
I like your openness. Great, amazing. And um, just, yeah, things you say just make me smile. Amazing, great. <laughs> Straight away, I was like really warm, friendly. Like it's very easy to talk to you, I feel. Um, yeah, really easy to get on with, so. Great, thank you. No worries. Okay, this is not ideal. You know, you were there, you saw it. And I totally relate to that feeling of like sitting across the table from someone great, but just not feeling that connection. And actually that level of honesty in dating is important because we don't want to leave people with question marks when we're not feeling question marks, you know? So that's honest and it is disappointing, um, but there's a level of vulnerability that we, we just have to take on as adults who are dating. So I'm a bit sad because I do know how this is gonna go and so do you. This is the part where our couple choose between IRL or URL. If they both pick IRL in real life, we'll send them off on a date without the cameras so they can get to know each other a little better. But if one or both of them go for URL, it's not been a match. And we'll put a link or URL in the notes below so that you can get in touch with them directly to ask them out yourself. No! Um, I think Matthew is lovely, but I just didn't feel a spark. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I think you're really nice as well, but yeah, I, w I wasn't sure. I was like, maybe a second date just to see, but yeah. Oh, okay, so it wasn't a date, but that's fine because the fun doesn't end there. We've got links down below where you can get in touch with Danny and Matthew. Drop them a line and ask them out. If you like the sound of The Handmaid's Tale meets The Matrix and you want to grab a Pepsi, uh, give me a message. So it didn't work out with Matthew, but if you'd like to meet me and try my sugar-free brownies and maybe try some Britney karaoke, then please drop me a message in the link below. If you want Salt to set you up on a date and you want me to play Gooseberry, apply for third wheel dates below. We love it when people bring in fresh baked goods and I swear I'll drink your Pepsi. And even if it doesn't end up being a match, we'll allow viewers the opportunity to drop you a message so there's always opportunities for dates and you never know who'll be watching.